Hello, Global Gladiators. We're back with Street Masters Rise of the Kingdom, and this time we're going to be looking at Natalia. I've already done two videos with full playthroughs with her, and she is easily the most versatile fighter and the most difficult to make videos about because of that versatility. If you're concerned possibly with spoilers, then this may not be the video for you. If you're concerned with rules on how certain cards are worded, this might be the perfect video for you. In the case of most of the videos that I do, we go through just the tactics and maybe a couple of special instances. In this case, we're going to go through all of Natalia's cards and explain how they work because she is an awesome fighter. She is the secret sauce of success when it comes to a difficult mission most of the time. But that also means being the Swiss Army knife of characters she needs a lot of explanation as to when you can use certain things or how you would use certain things. That being the case, let's jump right in and take a look at her normal card. Right off the bat, you can see she's got 18 health, which is one of the higher amounts of health out there. And she charges with six uh, power. This is not the lowest amount of power. It's not the highest amount of power. So on this end, she can tank a little bit and she can do a few things without flipping. Her attack does general damage, which means it's going to peel off whatever defense tokens are currently on the enemy before it goes to regular damage. So this can uh, work against you in certain ways if a boss is stacked with a certain type of defense token that you would otherwise be able to get through with someone that can do specific damage. But for the most part, it's still going to do something. Also, since she does general damage when she rolls a defense die, then she's going to be able to pick whatever defense token she wants to use. And uh, that can be very helpful, especially if you're going to use some of her other cards later that require a specific combination of defense token. At the end, she also exhausts the minion, which doesn't affect the boss, but it'll exhaust the minion, making it so that they can't attack or move, and you can manipulate the board a lot easier, however you want. And she can draw a card. Things in her hand are really useful because she's got so much versatility you'll have a lot more options because you have more stuff in your hand. When she does flip over she's able to move a little bit more and she starts dealing direct damage. It says here that your attacks deal plus one direct damage so if you were to use an attack card while Natalia stays on her charge side you're dealing plus one direct damage no matter what you do. Then if you used her action to attack it would also deal direct damage and you would flip the card back over. You have to make a decision. If you want to stay in the charged area, you can start using her attack cards and that's going to be of a huge uh, benefit to you, but it may come down that you really need to do that attack or you want to start drawing cards again with her non-flip side. If you've already pledged for Aftershock, maybe this is after the campaign and maybe it's past the pledge manager stage, you got to find a way to get turbo dice. If you use the turbo dice variant that's introduced in Aftershock, you'll be able to more easily control how much power you have and prevent yourself from flipping if you need to. And what that'll allow you to do is exhaust minions. Because as you can see on this charge side, you can't exhaust minions. You have to just hopefully defeat them. Normally when I do these videos, I do just the tactic cards, but right now I'm going to go through everything alphabetically. So if there's a card that you specifically want to find out about, it'll be up there in the frame. You'll be able to see it and you can jump around in the video, however, Facebook or BGG or YouTube, whatever source you get this video from, you can just jump directly to it and you'll have an idea of where to look for it in the video. Starting off, we're going to look at Commando. All of her attacks get one extra die so that's not just attacks that are done from her normal uh, action it's done also from the cards that are attacks as well she it has an that allows each fighter to gain two defense tokens of their choice and heal this means any fighter those are all of your allies all of the stage objective tokens that are considered fighters that's everything so this is probably the most powerful airy heal in the game. This is a starred card, so you're probably going to have a couple of these eventually in your hand. And that means you're going to want to use the feint. 
if you're in a situation where you need to be able to move to grab either an extra loot crate or just to get out of the way of something, you can use this card's feint and it'll also allow you to pull an attack card from your discard pile. Keep in mind, just attacks, tactics and abilities are not included in that. As a stealth card, when this is in your discard pile, it's going to power up some other attacks, so don't be afraid to use the feint ability on this, especially if you've got another one in your hand. The next card up is Disarm. A lot of the enemies, especially Dimitri, will end up with these gear cards, and what this allows you to do is an attack, and afterwards you can get rid of a gear card. If you don't have any gear cards in play, then you can still draw a card, and so this card is a great attack. As stated before, you can use it on the charge side to get a extra boost with direct damage, and uh, a lot of these super pain in the butt gear cards that buff up the bosses will be able to in one attack just go away. So this is remarkably effective, but it depends on which enemy deck you're using as how effective it is. The next card to look at is Infiltrate. This is a stealth card, which if it ends up in your discard pile will help you out. But also if you exhaust it, will allow you to pull one of those stealth cards back into your hand. As an action, it'll allow you to reveal the top card of any fighter deck. What that means is reveal is kind of a weird limbo space where it's not a part of anything anymore. If you reveal from hand, if you reveal from deck, if you reveal from anywhere on the board, that reveal space is its own thing. But you can put that card into play or discard it. Put into play, if it's an ability or an attack, that means you use it immediately. If it's a tactic, that means it will go into play into the player area of whosoever deck you pulled it from. So if you needed to give a particular fighter an extra helping hand and you wanted to pull a card for them, then this is a great card to kind of give it like an extra card action for somebody else by using your action. There's no distance requirement, so if you're in a good defensive space and you're using your cards in a good defensive way, this allows you to use your action to use one of the other characters, hopefully someone who's a much better damage dealer, to play a card and hopefully get one of those uh, terrible minions off the board or do one of those awesome attacks to uh, the boss. Notice that it does allow you to do an attack by discarding this card. I haven't had any situations where I wanted to discard this card. Instead, I always wanted to be able to return stealth cards back to my hand. But think about that. If you have another infiltrate in your hand, that means that this could be an attack for you of two direct damage as well as giving that other player the card action. The next card to look at is Razor's Edge. Not only is this a great ACDC album with Thunderstruck on it, it's also a great way to do an area attack and to kind of get around the uh, general damage problem. This lets you do a specific attack. It will allow you to hit somebody from a distance, and if you're acting defensively, this allows you to still use your regular action as uh, healing or one of the other benefits and still do some damage to somebody. Then we have Recon, which is easily the trickiest of the tricky cards. It says when an enemy would attack a fighter, you may discard this card to cancel the attack. You would need to have this card in play to use it. Even though it says discard, that does not mean discard from hand. If it meant discard from hand, it would say it. So this has confused a lot of people. It has to be in play. Now if you wanted to use Infiltrate after you use this card to put it back into your hand, and then you'll be able to play it the next turn, I totally suggest that you do that, and whenever a big boss attack is going to happen on your major tank, you should be discarding this card as often as possible to uh, cancel those attacks and keep your guys alive. The other great thing this can do is it allows you to shuffle a stealth card back into your deck and reveal the top of any deck. If you use this with Infiltrate, that means that when you use the action on Infiltrate, you'll be able to know what card will be put into play before you do anything else. And that gives you a lot more flexibility and understanding, and you won't waste it on a discard. Also, by shuffling cards back into your deck, that can really mess with characters like uh, Mac in the Onyx League, who powers up by forcing you to do discards. It upsets 
his ability to do that and keeps you alive a lot longer. Next is the best card for taking out multiple targets like zombies that have low health. That's Rush B. It allows you to move four times and do four different attacks. If you have four different targets, that means you get a plus one damage on each of them. So you're maximizing the damage output by hitting as many different people as possible. You do have to move each time. If you can, if you want, you can stop and do just one attack, but it's not gonna get the maximum benefit. If you circle a single enemy, you will only get plus one direct damage and you'll be giving up the opportunity to be doing a possible total of four direct damage. Because each of these attacks counts as an attack, if you do it from your charge side, if you do it with commando out, you get bonuses on those as well. Then we have snap kick. If you're using Natalia as a damage dealer, this is the best way to power her up. It is an attack, but it is also a stealth card. So if you were to use infiltrate, you can keep putting this back into your hand. If you look, it says you may discard one card. It doesn't matter what type of card it is to add another attack, which receives plus one for each stealth card in your discard pile. You can put a lot of damage on something if you have a whole bunch of cards in your discard pile. You will have some management issues as you discard more things than you are able to put back into your deck. So you have to be a little bit careful when you are fighting bosses like the Onyx League because you won't want to put too many things in your discard. But you can also use the other discard effects such as Recon and uh, other uh, cards like Commando that has a feint to put as many stealth cards before you play this card into your discard and power up the attack as possible. Card management is huge, so you can use other means of getting things back out on the board a little later, but when you need that perfect big hit, Snap Kick is your go-to. A couple of rules lawyering type things. Snap kick when it is played does not count as being in your discard pile because it is in the weird limbo space of currently being played. So even though it is a stealth card, you do not, you are not able to discard it twice and you're not able to power up because it is not in your discard at the time. All of the cards that you would be using to power up have to be in your discard pile at the time this is being resolved. Finally, we have a great card to play before you do the snap kick, which is Sonic Blade, which allows you to do more damage by discarding cards from your hand. And that's pretty much all it does. It allows you to do up to five dice attack, and then maybe in the next round, you'll be able to do another four or five extra damage because of things that are in your discard pile. So they're a great combo to go together, but you have to plan which cards you're gonna use ahead of time. That's it for Natalia. She is super versatile. I hope you play with her as often as possible. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns for me, go ahead and leave a comment wherever. I'm always in the Facebook page, and you can comment on the YouTube, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can with whatever extra rules there are. Before you yell at me about any rules you think were done differently, I encourage you to look at the Board Game Geek forums where you can get official responses from the Saddlers this is a controversial character because of her versatility and all the different ways people want to use her. But I did my best to find out all the information I could and make this as accurate as possible. I hope you're able to get some more people in on the game. And if you're having a hard time beating anything, make sure you include Natalia because she can heal you. She can do that extra damage and uh, she's just an awesome character all around. Have a good one.